According to the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry, Minnesota's agricultural production is valued at $21.3 billion, seventh in the United States. Also noteworthy are agricultural exports of $9.3 billion and over $106 billion annually, in total economic impact that supports nearly 400,000 jobs. Joining me to talk about the state of Minnesota's agriculture industry is Tom Peterson, the Commissioner of the Department of Agriculture. Thank you for being here. Great to be here. 2023 is the third year now that Minnesota has experienced drought conditions. Uh, avian influenza popped up in Meeker co County most recently. There were other outbreaks during the spring. Generally speaking, how are farmers and food producers faring right now? You know, it's uh, such an important time right now as we're uh, trying to wrap up harvest. This week we had snow and rain and it, uh, you know, closed things down. In general, we're in pretty good shape uh, for our harvest conditions. We're almost have all of our soybeans harvested. We're about 80% on our corn. Uh, and uh, yields are coming in better than we thought they would in the drought areas. For having that uh, drought, again, as you said, that we've experienced for many farmers, this is their third year. I'd say the hardest hit or the impacted are cattle uh, farmers who lost that uh, summer pasture. They lost uh, a lot of hay and forage, where some of the other crops came back or had uh, decent yields across the state. Uh, does, does impact our cattle uh, industry quite a bit. And then, uh, as you mentioned, unfortunately, we've had a, quite an outbreak of high path avian influenza. Uh, this fall, we're uh, up over 10 cases, uh, which uh, we didn't have any for a while, and now they're hitting uh, kind of hard. And so our producers take a lot of that biosecurity. We always want to remind people that chicken, poultry, is uh, turkey is uh, safe to eat. A lot of precautions taken there. But it, it's a trying time, as you say. you got to always be prepared as a farmer. Uh, the budget surplus available to lawmakers as they crafted the 2023 budget meant that all budget areas, including agriculture, received one-time increases in funding. This resulted in an increase in the Department of Ag's Emerging Farmers Initiative. How much will this investment help diversify both in terms of age and ethnicity Minnesota's food growers? You know, it really is uh, great investments that we see, not just in the Emerging Farmers Office, but we see things or investments in farm to school. Over Lieutenant Governor Flanagan and I were at uh, the Hutchinson Public Schools yesterday to see what they're doing and buying from those emerging farmers. So being able to create an emerging farmer's office in Minnesota is a unique thing across the country because we look at the demographics in Minnesota are changing rapidly. We have a large Somali, Hmong, Latino populations and they want to farm. And so uh, up until now in the egg census, the average farmer in Minnesota looks pretty much like me, mid 50s, white male. Uh, and uh, we want to help those people too, but we want to really encourage that next generation to fit those marketplaces. And so we're putting in resources, uh, sometimes it's translation services, grants, uh, access to programs that will help those uh, folks come along. And so we're really excited about that opportunity. An opinion by Carl Casale in the Star Tribune in August was titled, Women Are the Future of Agriculture. He notes that while historically women have been viewed in supporting or novelty roles, now one third of Minnesota's, Minnesota Farm's primary operators are women. Are women increasingly interested in agriculture? Yeah, I'd say that's always been the way. And, I, and I'd say like even more and more, we see that decision making, we see uh, especially whether it's in the local food movements, uh, technology. Uh, I visit a lot of farms and it's really interesting to see the role that women play. One thing is we just didn't recognize the con contributions that women use. The, the USDA, when we didn't even ask that question on the census to a f till a few years ago. And so I think just uh, uh, counting it, recognizing it, but it is very exciting to see a lot of the different uh, ingenuity and things that women are bringing to agriculture. It's very exciting. The Department of Agriculture's 18th Emerging Farmers Conference will be held this weekend. And it's not only geared to women farmers, but also indigenous, new American and BIPOC people. I checked the website and registration is now closed due to overwhelming interest. So for people who may be interested in next year's Emerging Farmers Conference, what 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 do they learn? Shannon, this is one of the 
uh, best things. I, you know, being an ag commissioner is great, and you get to do a lot of neat things. Uh, but this is one of the best conferences or things that I go to every year. The uh, the, the people at the Emerging Farmers Congress, they just want to learn, they want to network, they're so enthusiastic. And so that's what, you know, one, one thing I'd say is learning from other uh, people is wh whether you're an emerging farmer or you're somebody like myself, that's how you get uh, done. So connecting those dots. But the translation we see, I think it's uh, translated into eight different languages. And just to see that going on, the first time I attended, it was very jumbled to me. But then I realized about halfway through it, what was really going on, where we had people and we were getting the information. But I can just tell you the enthusiasm there is infectious. And it's exciting to see who wants to farm in Minnesota. Uh, the legislature used money from the surplus uh, to establish a grain indemnity fund. According to a Minnesota Public Radio report, Minnesota has averaged one grain elevator failure per year since 2015. And as I understand it, this new fund will reimburse farmers if they have sold their grain to an elevator that subsequently goes out of business. The law also included a provision to study regulation and financial oversight. Does this indemnity fund prompt riskier business dealings in the future? And is there still more that the legislature needs to do in order to make this thing work well? Yeah, the indemnity fund was really important as we continue to see failures and even as myself as commissioner and nothing happening. So farmers, uh, the, the current system we had was a bonding system that paid farmers or supported them pennies on the dollar. And, uh, you know, continuing to see farmers have, you know, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars in losses who thought they were protected um, was not working. And so we put the indemnity fund together. We hope to cover more of those losses. We still do have some work to do. Um, I think one of the things we've also put in some other protections in place, whether that's uh, education, working with auditing uh, board of directors. I've been on nonprofits and you glaze over sometimes when you do the audit reports. You got to pay attention to those. You got to look for those uh, pieces and that. And I think this, the failures that we've had have put a lot of co-ops and businesses on notice that you have to pay attention. Sometimes it's a manager who knows everything and then has a health problem, and uh, um, or we have fraud. And uh, so I think this is an interesting new law. Most of the states around us already had an indemnity fund, so we modeled it after that. And but we still do have a, a couple of I's to dot and T's to cross. But generally speaking, more security for farmers going forward. This will provide more security for farmers and uh, just to prevent bankruptcies, you know, at no fault of their own. Uh, Governor Walls is preparing to lead a trade delegation to Australia later this month. You have traveled on missions like these to the Philippines and the United Kingdom. Deputy Commissioner Andrea Vobel went to Japan recently. From the perspective of the leader of the state's agriculture agency, what is the value of these trips? Well, Minnesota's an agricultural powerhouse. We're known around the world uh, in, uh, you know, if you look at the companies and co-ops that we're home to here, whether it's CHS, Cargill, General Mills, Lando Lakes, Genio, uh, we are a global state, you know, and, and I wasn't necessarily a feed the world type of person when I became commissioner, but when you travel and you see that a lot of the world doesn't produce the food that they need and that they, that, that they want, and so Minnesota does. And so uh, I'm always excited to see the people that are excited to uh, meet with us. Uh, a lot of times they don't, um, it's a lot about relationships. Trade's a lot about relationships, and it may not come right away. It might come two years from now. We visited uh, Colombia, Finland, England, uh, the Philippines. Those uh, trips still pay dividends in those relationships to us. So incredibly, uh, I'm excited even in Australia, we continue to have people reach out to us even though our itinerary is almost set saying, can we sneak in one more meeting? We wanna show you something, we wanna do business in Minnesota. So they, they uh, play an incredible value to our state. Commissioner Tom Peterson, it is always a pleasure, thank you. Thank you, Shannon.